Whether you're an avid bird watcher or just want to sharpen your woodworking skills, this project is custom made for you. This bird feeder can attract birds from miles around to feast in your backyard. It's made from pressure treated southern pine to last for years in the elements and look great the entire time. Mounted on a wall outside a window for a truly unique viewing experience or simply install it near your deck. Either way, it'll make you and the birds happy. This is a project I wanted to keep relatively simple so you could knock it out probably half a day in the shop, maybe a whole day if you really wanted to go slowly. Uh, we're going to base it, the whole thing off a one by six by 10. And essentially I've just cut it into two sections because I just don't like dealing with 10 foot sections of lumber. So about four and a half and five and a half foot sections and then we'll rip those down. Plus, we we'll get to use a new tool. This is really cool, you'll love it. First thing though, let's rip some two and a quarter inch strips out of our uh, first piece. Whenever I'm ripping lumber, I like to take a little off the factory edge so I'm sure to have two clean edges in the project. Rip enough of the 1x6 to create all sides of the octagon. Now we'll need roughly 64 linear inches of material, so a couple of strips from the 4 foot length will be more than enough. Each side will need to be bevel cut to 22 and a half degrees. Measure and mark 8 inches on the strip you just cut. Next, align the saw blade to the mark and set up a stop to keep each piece uniform. Use a spacer block to help prevent jamming. Then, clamp a piece of scrap to act as the stop on the bed of the saw. Use the spacer block to cut both ends of the first piece, flipping it end for end. For the second and subsequent pieces, slide the strip up to the stop for the first cut, then flip it and use the spacer for the second. This way we'll keep the grain pattern aligned along the perimeter of the feeder. Once all eight sides have been cut, use a sanding sponge to clean off any rough edges. Next, lay out the octagon loosely. Two framing squares clamped to your work surface will act as a guide and help you keep the joints aligned. Once the sides are snugly in place, measure across the inside of the feeder and cut a cross brace to fit. Measure and mark the center of the top and bottom of the feeder and use these marks to align the cross brace. This can be the width of your choosing. I ripped this strip down to two inches just to add some dimension. Apply glue to each end and then fasten the brace with nails. Once the brace is installed, begin gluing each side of the feeder in place. Take your time and make sure to check alignment every so often. We're not using nails in the joints, so we want them to be as tight as possible. Once all the sides are glued, measure and cut lateral cross braces. I laid mine flat, again, just for dimension. Glue and nail them into place as well. Now, if you're looking for an alternative to the glue-only method, it's your lucky day. Just look for these small mending plates at your local home improvement store. They're about 50 cents each and can be easily bent into a 22 and a half degree angle, then fastened to the inside of each joint. And here's a bonus tip. These miter clamps are handy to keep glued joints tight while they dry. Every shop should have a set. All right, while that one's drying, let's take a look at this one I made a little bit earlier. And uh, can you imagine that? The miters aren't perfect, and well, there's all kinds of imperfections. Quite frankly, I'm not happy with it. Where the top of these pieces lined up, do we throw it away or do we fix it? Let me show you how to fix it. Love the stainable wood filler. This stuff is great. Best way to, is get it in the tube. It's just a whole lot simpler to use that way. It's a lot like toothpaste, except it doesn't taste as good. A little on the putty knife, and we're just gonna fill in each one of those joints and any knot holes and any nail holes that we may find around the perimeter of this entire piece. And then once that dries, we'll sand it all smooth. Once the wood putty has dried thoroughly, sand the joints in any rough spots. Now I like to give the joints a slight round over. It just makes a nicer transition from piece to piece. All right, once the filling and sanding is done, it's time to break out a brand new power tool. It's called a Dremel Trio, and it's basically a small router. And the really neat thing about it is the handle pivots, so it can be an inline tool 
like that, or that traditional handle there. It's a squeeze trigger. You squeeze the trigger and the bit spins. I loaded a small chamfer bit into the chuck so we can ease the top edges of the feeder. Again, it's a totally optional step, but I wouldn't want you to miss the fun, and don't forget your safety glasses. As with any other router, always use caution and don't force the tool. Let it cut at its own speed. Now, I found it easier to route the inside edge of the feeder from the top and the outside edge from the side. But no matter how you get there, the finished piece is worth the effort. It has a nice contour and feel to it. If you're planning to paint or stain the feeder, this is a good time to do it before we install the wire mesh bottom. This is hardware cloth. If you're not familiar with it, it's basically a loose mesh wire screen. That's it. It has sharp edges, so if you have sensitive fingers, make sure you wear gloves. With the bird feeder upside down, I've cut the piece of hardware cloth just a little larger than the bottom, and then I'm going to use a stapler to start stapling in the middle, working my way out to each uh, edge, and then we'll use a pair of diagonal cutters to cut away the excess. You can use a manual stapler to get this done as well. Fasten the hardware cloth every couple of inches for a snug fit. Use the diagonal cutters to cut away the excess around the perimeter. And if you'd like, you can add some trim to the bottom to cover any exposed ends of the wire mesh. Just miter each end to 22 and a half degrees and use glue and finish nails or tacks. To create the mounting post, rip three strips to two and a quarter inches wide by 24 inches long. Now we'll laminate these strips together. If you need to piece together the inner strip as I've done here, that's fine. Spread glue evenly across each piece and use clamps to hold the setup in place while the glue cures. While it's drying, we'll make the brackets. Cut two lengths from the one by six, as long as the board is wide. They should be roughly five and a quarter to five and a half inches square. Use the chamfer bit to soften the edges if you'd like. Then drill pilot holes about an inch from each corner. Once the post is dried, use wood putty to fill any gaps or imperfections and sand it smooth. Then cut a 45 degree miter at both ends. Measure and drill pilot holes on the opposite side of the mounting brackets to secure them to the post. Apply glue and use exterior grade screws to fasten. Finally, position the post assembly onto the bottom of the feeder and use screws to attach it securely. Well, that, as they say, is that. All we need is a great mounting spot and a few birds to take advantage of the feast. Guess I'd better go by the feast. See you next time here in the workshop. Remember realoutdoorliving.com for great workshop projects using wood. It's real.